Welcome to episode 192 of the Muck Podcast, a member of the Odd Pods Media Network. Listen in as we discuss the dark and sometimes weird true stories in American politics. I'm Tina Jaramillo. And I'm Hillary Doherty. Well, hello. Hey. Uh, here we are, face to face, a couple of podcasters. Oh, I was enjoying that. that. No, uh, what, what? Well, I mean, it's to the tune of uh, Silver Spoons. Oh, I didn't. What? A oh, couple what? of silver spoons. Da na na na. We're two of a kind. Something. Or am I, I must be too young for that show. You might be. I'm just kidding. I know silver spoons. No, do you? <laughs> <laughs> that rich Ricky Ricky Schroeder, oh. who's now a right wing modern Com- guy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess he started off on a show where he was, you know, you know, surrounded by wealth and privilege. Yeah. Maybe it did something to him. Jeez, this mm. guy. Remember when Ricky Schroeder, or what was his name on the show? I don't even know. I think it was Ricky. Yeah, I think so too. Something and like he was, that. He rode like the, he had the train that went through yes. the house. Motherfucker. What a jerk. <laughs> Was what about jerk. here's all this wealth that you're never yeah, gonna have. Yeah, it was. They made it like was. Dynasty and like Dallas, and then they had one for the kids, which yes, is Silver Spoons, Spoons yeah. which is a giant fuck you. You're never yeah. gonna have this. Although yeah. I really would rather have lived in Pee Wee's Playhouse, to be honest with I you, mean, than Ricky Schroeder's house in Silver Spoon. Oh my god. Yeah, it was all things like clothes and and oh. styles. And yeah, just I saw things that I could never ever have. Yeah, I saw a clip of Dynasty. It was with Heather. Remember Heather Locklear started on that show. Oh, was God. it Dynasty when she was on? Dynasty, I just remember the... Let me see real who's quick. Who's the lady with the brown hair? Yeah. You know, um, the thin... Joan Collins. Yes. That's like Heather when I think Heather Locklear. Is it Dynasty? Oh, was yeah. She, she was on Dynasty. She was. Okay. Yeah. Um, I didn't really watch it. That was stunning. Like, she was so I feel like it was a little before my time. It was. It was before my yeah. time, too. But I saw this clip, and I was like, damn. Because it was... The, the, the bitchy fight cat fights oh. is the thing on the shows. So I saw that clip and I was like, I should really watch Dynasty. I oh, think that would be, be fun. fun. That would yeah. be fun. That would be Plus, fun. Plus, I'm here for that the look. I want to enter my Dynasty era oh, of, of dress. Let's do it. <laughs> like this rainbow turtleneck. This <laughs> <laughs> really fits right in with Dynasty. I'm like the clown cousin who shows up and is oh, like, hey, everybody, God. what's going on? <sighs> so what do you have? I have a couple things. I mean, I, I just have well, one thing that I'm um, really upset about is the Nebraska mother Hmm. who helped her daughter gain access to abortion by getting her the abortion pills. Mm. I remember, I don't know if you remember the story, and then the daughter got like a, I think it was like 15 months or nine. Oh, right. Yes, 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 yes. They just sentenced the mother. Two years in jail. (laughs) Two years in jail for helping her daughter access abortion care. And wow, I don't. I, I am d- the fact that that even the girl got jail time. That we are criminalizing and jailing women in the United States of America. We are criminalizing and jailing women in the United States. What the fuck? It's that is what. The fuck? Shocking. This is shocking. And I just, I, I told you, I just started writing a letter. I started writing a letter. It's completely incomplete. And it's two conservative women. That's that's going to be my audience. Because I'm fucking sick of it. These women propping up these men who make these fucking laws. And, and I, I'm fucking sick of it. Let me tell you something. I'm sick of you, it. I, and, I, and as a mother of a daughter... I would do it every single day and twice on Sunday, smuggle her out of somewhere to get her an abortion oh. if she needs it. You better fucking believe it. Give me the jail time. I'll take it. I mean, Standing on my fucking head, I would do the jail I mean, time. I, I feel like uh, 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 like we need a, a, a fucking army. We need an uprising of women. Because the conservative women, like, you know, go fuck yourselves. You know what I mean? Like, you're religious. You're, you're this misguided, misinformed fucking dogma that they have that's trying to, like, control everybody like that's who you are you know what i mean like we're never going to change that mindset but to the other women out there who are like man that sucks or if you're sitting in a blue state and it doesn't impact you like we still need everybody to spread the word about what the fuck's happening (laughs) on top of that to piggyback on that abortion is not a dirty word it's not and i'm fucking tired of that tired of it because 
it's going to be used continuously through the presidential campaigns. Like this is the issue. It will be the issue. Get comfortable with hearing the word abortion yeah. and reading it and seeing it on social media and anywhere else. It's a real fucking thing. And it's not, the thing that pisses me off the most is that the well-being and the health of women and girls is being used as a political football. Like this is a private healthcare decision. It's really insane. But, but these are and lies. See, that's right. These, these are, are lies. This, is like, this could be life or death for a girl or a woman, a rape victim, an incest survivor, someone who how about needs someone, healthcare. But how about someone who just wants an abortion? Absolutely. Somebody who just wants the healthcare. It should be available. And the reason why you're hearing so much about it is because your elected, elected officials and the people who want to be president are going to use it. And when you look across the dinner table at your daughters and your wives, you remember that, that their well-being in their lives are being used as a political football and vote for the people who aren't trying to do that, who are trying to protect them. It's outrageous. It's sick. I can't, it's and also like, I can't imagine as a dude, if you don't get it, like, then shut the fuck up and move on. If, if you don't understand the fear that this puts into women, when she just said that, a fucking chill went down my spine. Like, we are here. This is it. The stuff that we've been fighting for since we were teenagers, hearing about them chipping away, this has been going on for 30 fucking years. Here we are. The time to bury your heads is fucking over. It's over. Because all the, oh, Roe will never be overturned. That's done. It's and the done. man who's taking responsibility for it is running for president again. And guess what? He's in the lead. Yeah, 40 points ahead. He's in the lead. And he has said that he will criminalize abortion on the federal level. He has oh, said they're, it. They're absolutely going to sign he an abortion ban. It. They're going to sign an abortion ban. He has said it. And I can't understand fear. I can't understand fear of speaking out about it. Listen. And again, like you can have your own personal <laughs> beliefs. You can be in your safe little space, but you need to think about all women, all people who have a uterus. We are all in danger in this state. By the way, if you have sons, they could get someone pregnant. Don't you want this girl to have access to health care and choice? I mean, just because if you have sons, it doesn't mean you're out of this conversation. Oh, my God. I'm just so sick of, like, the excuses of and wanting they, to create spaces where we don't have these conversations. Every space should be having this conversation. Yeah. Every fucking space. Because we've all taken our eye off the ball and thought this would never happen. And now here we are where mothers are being locked up and, and girls she, because she had an abortion. For two years, this woman has to sit in prison. She's coming out a martyr. For what? She's coming out a fucking martyr. For what? Yeah. Well... For Good. what? Make an and, example and, and of and her. These, Let's these, see what happens and, next. And, and, you know, the conservative, you know, right and brothers and sisters and these women, like, you are not for your sisters. You know what I mean? How dare You're you? You're rejecting your sisters who have abortion. No. I'm, right? You're rejecting people who ate in a bed. People who have an abortion. Trying to criminalize local roads. You're rejecting women. To drive who, off. Yeah. Who, who have abortions. Right? Like, and who support abortion. Like, you are just stonewalling all of us for your own belief. Like, I can't take it. Like, go stand in your church on Sunday all day, but don't bring that shit in my house and the hypocrisy of it anyway. How much penance are you going to have to do for what you're doing? That's what you should think about. The harm and danger you're causing You know, your people. blind faith is blinding you mm. to what you're doing. She's reading us that letter. You got that letter? Are you going to read it? Are you done? No. It's completely incomplete, she it's said. Un uh, listen. I, right. I, listen, I, listen. I'm, listen. My, uh, I'm angry. Uh, it's, you know, some of our highest, I believe, I think it was like our highest rated videos on YouTube are the ones where we were screaming about uh, the row, post row world, you know, where we talked about what it's like to sit here and not have those rights anymore. Uh, it's I, funny I don't know because. How you look at any child, girl, boy, anyone. And this is the world that we're leaving them. I, I, I am like legitimately afraid. Like I read that, and yeah. I said I can't. You should I just, be afraid. You should. I cannot believe that there is a state. And this is the thing. I don't understand. Like, and we talked about it on here before. And you're talking about the roads, right? Like that you can't even be on a local In Texas access road. Trying to to criminalize to, driving yeah, driving, driving on, on a road, some, driving someone to get an abortion. Right. If you go on this road or that road yes. or that road. If you've already broken the law. Right. It's crazy. But we live in the United 
states of America. You know what I mean? And if there are different laws in different states, it just I am a, an American citizen. Yes, I am a, a, a constituent and I'm someone who's a resident of the state of Florida, but ultimately I'm an American. And as an American, I should be able to go to where the fuck I want to go in this country and do what I want to do. Because if my state restricts me and another state doesn't, who is that state to tell me I can't travel outside the border of my state? Right. What is that? Well, that's what is that? Exactly. Like Florida. we are still citizens of the United States of America. Now we start having like national IDs, you know, where you it's can't a, it's leave, outrageous. You can't leave your state. You can't it's leave outrageous. Your... That's where we're going. They're literally in Texas. They are making a roadmap on how to criminalize abortion right. like this. And where, and and the is going to be here's where the abortion clinic is. What are all the roads that lead into it? And yeah. those are the illegal roads. Like yeah. what? Right. Right. How else are they going to do it? Right. And it's got to be state roads and yeah. local roads, but if it's a road that maybe crosses international, like not international, uh, across state lines, maybe interstate. that wouldn't count. An interstate road maybe wouldn't count because it's interstate. But how the but, hell but, do you get you an interstate without going through your local that's roads? That's what they're it's doing. So <laughs> I don't even. It's know. demonic and like diabolical. It's so. Uh, and, and and somebody said that the other day. Why somebody said why are libs so obsessed with abortion? And I thought. We're so obsessed with abortion. We're so obsessed with it because of this kind of yes. this kind of bullshit. We have to be obsessed because I don't know. Maybe I don't want that baby growing inside of me. Maybe I want to have a conversation with my doctor where he can actually give me good medical advice right. and not have the legislature standing on his fucking shoulder. I don't know. Maybe that's why I'm a little obsessed with it. Why don't you let me sit in the next time the doctor looks at your dick? Right. And then we'll talk. We'll have a whole conversation publicly about right. how that goes. I'll tell everybody about what it looks like and how small it is. Because that's the kind of people who ask questions like that. Small dicks, small minded motherfuckers. That should be the name of this episode. Yeah, I mean. And you know what? The world, the, the problem is the majority of men in the world are small dicked and have small minds. That's the problem. And, they and can't by the way, it. and we've said this before in the podcast, that's not my fault. That's not my fault Listen, that you have a small dick. It's genetics, man. Yeah. Do you, some about it. Use it to your... You don't figure it out. I mean, listen. The motion of the ocean, wherever the fuck yeah. that goes. I don't listen, know. Listen, that's true. Motion of the ocean. And Bitch, listen. just use that small dick. I don't know. Listen, I, don't they have things today where you can go get some, like, enlargement? Yeah. yeah. Figure it out. Go to Hims. Hims.com. Hims.com. They got all kinds of uh, pills there for you. Yeah, just go figure it out. That's where I go for okay. my anxiety medication because your small dicks are in my face. Get the fuck out of here. How, that's what I hear when some man says I'm not for abortion all I can think is his dick is so tiny yeah well that's what women are thinking believe me and, believe me if and, you say that we know that you have the smallest penis on the fucking planet and the microscopic thing, dick yeah well the other thing that I think of too <laughs> that should be I, the that's this episode, episode. I, <laughs> the, woo, hi. Mm, honey the thing that gets me too is is it, it, maybe it is the, the, the small dick energy maybe oh um, for some, but I also think that there is something with men who, it is such a judgment on women, mm. right? That, that if a woman is pregnant, there is still this stigma that it is her fault, right? right. Like we still, there's very little accountability on men for that. And, 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 um, also there's this idea of women, um, oh, what is the saying like? Rode hard and put up with, mm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that, that, that maybe they've been with too many women. Maybe that, you know, like there's all of these judgments that somehow uh, you now feel like you can remove their choice from them because you don't maybe like that they are being intimate with someone. That yeah, there, they is are, a, there is a, there is a whore factor. Sexual. There's a yeah. whore factor. Yeah. Like, and like, that's what it is. Like, you know, aside from like, you know, um, um, you know, people who are assaulted, I'm talking about everyday women who yep. get pregnant and who, for whatever reason, it's not the right time for them. And they are not incubators that have to give up nine, 10 months of their lives and the damage to their bodies because you feel like that's what they need to do. Because you don't like that. Maybe they made a choice and an accident happened. Like, I don't know. It's outrageous. It's a 100% privacy issue. And, you know... And it's not a you, baby. When you argue it about like that, and, you know, the way they argue about their religious rights in this country, they have religious rights, it's in the Constitution. There's also a thing in the Constitution about privacy. And a privacy with our bodies and in, in a doctor's office. 
you are literally discussing what's happening inside of my body. Like that's fucking insane that the government has any say in that whatsoever. There's no other medical procedure in the history of this country that is more legislated than abortion. And the fact that it's attached to what happens to a woman's body is not a fucking coincidence. It's all, it all matters. It all matters. It's, it, it, you know. Well, that's what I had this week. Well, I ha also had um, the U.S. News report. And, and I don't try to go by, like, the, new, you know, the college rankings and things like that. Oh, you have dropped. Oh, a bunch of Florida schools. Yeah. Now, across the country, schools did drop because Look they did change. Look at sexy shoulders. See, Tina's showing hey. that. I just know that sexy shoulder over there. Oh, it's hot. It's oh, on this camera. Is, good. This is the shirt you got. Oh, I did. So, uh, <laughs> I got my 80s vibe. I got my Grateful Dead vibe. Uh, <laughs> I'm giving my these, I'm New York <laughs> fall vibes. These... <laughs> Yes. These schools dropped, and they did drop. However, uh, uh, you know what school dropped the most was New College. Yeah, well, New which College. Which is the point. This was the point. Yeah, this was the point of taking over the school. It, but, 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 but this is everything, and we talked about this last time, everything that DeSantis touches turns to shit. <laughs> it doesn't turn to gold. No. It turns to shit. Yeah, he's the All opposite right? of King and, and Midas. This, 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 right? get, yeah, the yeah. opposite of King Midas. And this guy... You know, uh, uh, who says, like, Florida is where woke goes to die. Florida is where hope goes to die. That's what happens in the state of Florida when our rights are all taken away. I'm so, I'm on a rant today. No, no, I'm good, sorry. because I'm but, glad you brought up the You know, our because... intellectual freedom yeah. is fucking gone. Our body autonomy is fucking gone. Our LGBTQ rights, gone. Voter rights, gone. Freedom trans, to assemble, trans rights. gone. Yeah. Environmental protections, Gone. I mean, God damn, he's going to be putting uh, formaldehyde b fucking bullshit and radioactive shit in our goddamn roads that we're going to be breathing. And those workers that have to lay down those roads have to breathe in. Well, as long as they're not illegal. Right. Oh, and that's the other thing. <laughs> that's the other thing that we heard from DeSantis's office this week is because of our lack of workers now because of the immigration issue that he caused in the state. They are now removing protections from our youth oh Who right before <laughs> be, there, if you worked for a, yes. a store and you had to leave at 10 o'clock or you can't work more than 15 20 hours i forget what it is now all of that is gone you can work till 11 12 o'clock at night and these are kids there are kids in the state that work these after school jobs to help their families but they still need to go to school and learn and now they can have an employer that says, I'm sorry, Johnny, you got to work 30 hours. You got to cover the shift. You got to stay till close at 12 well, o'clock. The employer, the family, the family and needs now money. What? Then they, and then now they send what? their kids to work. And then they're tired. Yeah. And then it impacts their school. This is such well, these garbage. These kids aren't going to school. These kids aren't going to school. It's garbage. Okay. I'm glad you brought up right, DeSantis because, I'm uh, no. Uh, there is an article came out yesterday in Politico that is so fucking insane they talked to all these lobbyists and members of the legislature and like people who are like high political people in Tallahassee in the Republican Party anonymously, like completely anonymously because they're all scared of like retribution. But basically the tone is that they're, it's not if he's going to drop out, it's when is he going to drop out of this race Ooh, and that they are tired of his shit. Oh, they're fucking tired of let's his go. shit. And it said, uh, here's one, a major lobbyist in Tallahassee said, quote, there is no love lost between the legislature and DeSantis. They are faking it, which we always knew. Okay. Right? But you know wait, what? Wait, 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 let me finish. God they are waiting. It. They are waiting long enough to see the king drained of all his power. It's a slow motion coup, end quote. Okay. But guess what? <laughs> I'm You're sorry. probably going to say exactly what I said. Go Slow ahead. Slow motion coup? <sighs> Screw you. Yeah. Because, like, uh, nice. I'm glad that, like, inside you're upset about it. Yeah. But, but you, put it out. Let's see what? it. Let's see but it. But guess what? Yeah. Let's look at the voting rolls. That's right. That's what I said. I said, I love dissent. I love to hear about dissent. I want to fucking see it. Yeah. I want to say. see you put that's your votes say. where your mouth is, motherfuckers. Your anonymous mouth. Let's see you do it. Because they know he's coming back. They know he's a lame duck Republican. And so I think the thing is to, to not do all of his work, like, you know, because a lot of them are catching so much shrapnel at home and in their home districts about what, what they've been doing there. And so basically, and also whoever the new, I forgot, I forgot the name of the new, uh, 
uh, Perez, I think, is the new speaker. And he basically put an edict out that, like, we are not going to be taking direction from over here. Okay. So we'll see what happens. Okay. We'll see what happens. But also, when the legislative session starts in January, he's not going to be here for, like, three months. He's Good. on the road. Good. So hopefully. Good. But maybe there will get done. Then. Some Republicans did go on the record and said, like, like that are elected and said, well... He still has the pen, so we have to be kind of careful about what we're doing. But I, we've heard all of these rumblings from all of our Democratic leaders that we've talked to here and off the podcast that tell us that they these Republicans there don't like these bills, but they go along with it to hold on to their power because they're pussy-ass motherfuckers, right? <laughs> and so they go along with it. So let's see what happens now. Let's see what happens see. now. Because all eyes are on you. Like, the the, 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 the five years that, that he's been in office, he has taken the state into the darkest de- depths of hell, and not alone. Every yeah. single one of your if votes, you, every if, single one of you who took votes on in committee on and on the back. floor, you, are, you have brought us to our knees as well, and you will never be forgotten for that. Believe. Believe it. He had a lot of help getting yeah. there. A lot of help with... With the person that wants to run for governor next, no, I don't. I, I, I don't want to talk about that. Please, okay. I, 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 I have to tell you, if that motherfucker runs for governor and, and gets wins, elected, I we have, have to get we out of. We have to There's get no out of here. Choice. We are a joke. I mean, we're already Florida man joke, and I, and I, like I said, I embrace it. I get it. But no. if Matt Gates becomes the fucking governor oh, wait, of the uh, state, uh, 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 uh. we have to get out of here oh, quickly. God. I'm not, it's not, because it goes beyond laughing stock. He's, he's, he's more dangerous. He's, he had sex he's with minors the, on, allegedly. allegedly on a fucking, uh, you know, across state lines. Like this guy's, come on. No, 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 no. Like that's right. just, that's just bad news. Just bad news. So I wanted to talk about Rupert Murdoch is leaving Fox. He's out as the CEO of, of Fox. <clears throat> And I, you know, it's very Succession-esque, right? Like, we all know that this character in Succession yeah. was very much based on, oh, yeah. you know, uh, Murdoch and his children. But I wanted to play this clip of Owen Jones. He was on uh, a BBC, a BBC uh, talk show, a news show in the morning after they announced it. And it's it goes so closely to the point of, like, this is a big deal because if someone as powerful as this can shift the narrative about so many things for decades is, you know, news conglomerates and like being in charge of one person being in charge of many newspapers or networks. Like this is what happens. It's, it's a, it's a minute and a half. It's kind of long, but it's really, really good. His name is Owen Jones. And I, I, I mean, I just thought it was so perfect. Hold on. Well, he's the, Rupert Murdoch is the most poisonous individual of my lifetime. Uh, 20 years ago, just as an example, on the road to war in Iraq. Um, Rupert Murdoch owns 175 newspapers all around the world, and all 175 newspapers backed the Iraq war. They softened up public opinion for what was a calamity which took the lives of hundreds of thousands of people and unleashed terrible blood and chaos. And why do I mention that? Uh, Because it shows that the idea that we have this free press uh, with all, all these newspaper outlets and media outlets around full of rigorous journalism coincidentally all backed this catastrophic war. Many other examples, though, in the 1980s, when the bodies of hundreds of thousands of gay men were being ravaged by AIDS all over the world, his newspapers whipped up the most vile bigotry against gay men. If you think about the United States, uh, we mentioned uh, Fox News, their peddling of conspiratorial nonsense about the Obama administration, the Islamophobia, that paved the way for Donald Trump, who he spoke to every single week when he was president. Or if you think about the climate emergency, spreading climate denialism about what is an existential threat to human civilization, his attacks on migrants, refugees. So you're, you're, you're a big fan then, right? Well, huge yeah. fan. But I think it's really important we say this yeah. because this isn't just some media owner. This guy is a politician. He's a very, very powerful political figure who has, without being elected by a single person, had a huge disruptive and pernicious and poisonous impact in our democracy, Australian democracy, US democracy, and democracies all over the world. So powerful, right? Like so powerful that he can shift. The press, yeah, you and control it, everything. It really is. Um, I mean, I wonder. I, they did announce that one of his sons is going to be taking over, <laughs> and so like I wonder if this kind of shit would continue. But probably. I mean, it's so fucked up to me 
that one person can have that much of an impact on on so many issues and i mean you're right like the idea of just like buying up newspapers and news sources to be able to peddle your own yeah point of view and like, he talked to trump every week when he was president he talked to rupert murdoch every single week Ew. What the fuck? I mean, what? I mean, but really, how much substance could those conversations have had? Mm-hmm. The guy. I mean, Trump is such a, like. Trump was talking about like Obama, like he's senile. We talked oh, about. Oh, did you see week. this? These clips now of, of Trump. He's cuckoo. He's yeah. cuckoo McGee. Yeah. He's senile. You're gonna have yourselves another Mitch McConnell on your hands. Yeah. Before you know it. He doesn't look good either. There's something no. like off. But yeah, he was talking about oh, if we reelect this guy, Obama. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna go to world. It could be World War Two. I mean, um, what? Like, it I seems mean, like he's slowly slipping and it's yes. happening on the, and the stress of all of these charges can't be, can't be a lot. I mean, listen, <laughs> oh if my he God. Was smart, oh my get God. out of this damn campaign. Like go 90 be charges. In a, go be in a, 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 a room somewhere with your legal team and try to dig yourself out of this mess that you're probably not going to be able to mm. completely dig yourself out of. But why are you still on? I mean, he clearly is only running for president because he wants to try to rid himself of these yeah. charges. He, he said he would pardon himself. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Where are, you, we are, where, where are we living in? I don't know. We're living in a comedy. <laughs> it's someone else's comedy. They're watching this show yeah. and they're like, Jesus, yes. what's going to happen next? <laughs> you know? What's going to happen next in America? Uh-huh. What next, America? Mm-hmm. And we're suffering and they're this sitting with the popcorn. What's next, America? Let's see what happens next on this shitty fucking yeah. show. I mean, are we, an ex- are we part of an experiment? Like, is this what's happening? Have to be. This is like a Rick and Morty. When Rick and Morty are watching yeah. different alien stations, yeah. they flip to yeah, America and there's Trump. Are. And they're here like, this is the worst television yeah. show that's ever existed. Like, All right. Wait, what's happening? Two quick things that I wanted to bring up. First thing is I want to say how much I love Kevin Bacon. I oh, I love his Instagram. Me too. And he's I, so cute with his wife. Yes, I want. I want some and sort of time. way to protect Kevin Bacon oh. in like a bubble. He's a national treasure. He okay, is. isn't he adorable? Adorable. And I I see his stuff on Twitter, but it's the same videos. Like he's on TikTok, whatever. Yeah. I don't know what this man's doing. I know I he's him still acting, stuff. but he's like cultivating he's on a, farm. a social social media like yeah. thing that is so fucking good but he does this thing where he does the alpha music alphabet yes and so he'll he all he takes like like right now i think he's on n or o and he pulls three artists out that start with n and he'll play a little clip of their music from his record collection oh and, and he talks about when he heard it or whatever yeah. like what it meant to him it's so good and then he sings songs he sings with his wife so, yes. kira sedgwick who i fucking love Isn't so adorable? much i Isn't love her she adorable and by the way what jeans the both of them have like they yeah. both look so fucking good they so, look and good, they don't look they like they've done anything oh, to no, themselves no, no. They they're they aging be- they're living in a farm in the middle of nowhere uh, with goats and shit i can, can, can i just I, love him i love him Kira, can we come visit they have a podcast he has a podcast called six degrees podcast oh. you know that game six degrees yeah. separation I, you know i'm of, six I, degrees of kevin bacon we're all six degrees i'm six yeah. degrees of kevin bacon how? How do you know? Uh, I'm going to tell you how. I got to I got to oh do God. it. I got to do it. I got to do it. Oh shit. Like can I look one thing up? Oh my Hold god. On. You can look up anything because if you're 6 degrees of Kevin Bacon, um I am. Well done. That's well a great. Done. Oh my god. We should do that as on a Patreon. Uh, okay, like we're name doing a it. name a movie star and how is yes. it 6 degrees? You're supposed to be able to from with any movie star or TV star, they're six degrees away from a ke- being in a Kevin Bacon movie. Like, what actor do they work with? Who okay. do they work with? Who okay. do they work with to get next to okay. Kevin Bacon? All right. So here, this is how I'm six degrees. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Um. Ba 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 ba. We'll cut some of this. By out. the way, the, the game isn't how is Tina six degrees from no. Kevin Bacon. It's movie stars. I know, but I'm six, six degrees. I'm telling you. This is fucked up. <laughs> okay. I am six degrees from Kevin Bacon because Ugh. my dad. His cousin, like, uh, uh, knew, lived in Italy. In, Paisan. In, it's Paisan, like, in the same town Fuji. with Madonna's cousin. Madonna was in, was married to Sean Penn. Who is and it? was in Mystic River with <laughs> So there you go. There you go. Okay? My Paisan roots helped me out over there. And now I'm wow. next to Kevin Bacon. Oh, wow. We went All right, deep. so can I come to the farm now? Yeah. Can I go pet your goat, please? Oh, wait, then you're six degrees because you know me. Woo! Oh, but were you five or what was your I degree? think I was five. Yeah, you were less than. 
So there we go. We're both six degrees of Kevin Bacon. <sighs> Kevin, so motherfucking now, bacon. We need to come to the farm. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Where Please. is this farm? Please. Let us come on your. Can we come and, on oh my podcast? god, and Kira. Okay, I. Let me tell you something about She's Kira Sedgwick. So Let me tell you about cute. Kira Sedgwick in the movie Singles. <gasps> That's my favorite movie. I I what know why you, know? you love it. I know why oh, you love it. Yeah, I we mean, know I Pearl mean, Jam. I mean. <laughs> Eddie Vedder's in there. Oh, he looked adorable. That so... '90s Eddie Vedder look, honey, honey. <laughs> oh, when he would take his shirt off. <laughs> oh my god. Also, in, in, <laughs> I'm glad that the Hillary the, turn, the Tina taking the Hillary turn is good. But in that movie. When yeah. Eddie Vedder is sitting at the table, at the he's table, reading, and he looks up. Reading, he doesn't want to tell him about it. Yeah, but then he's like, uh, "Drummer Eddie Vedder," uh, and he goes, "A good review for you." <laughs> <laughs> like, for me, it's a good review for us. Yeah, yeah. So cute. Oh, Matt Dillon. He's so, and he's got the little hat. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah, he's. Oh, that's the so Tina's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The that's, love of my life. Wow. Oh, yeah, I mean, come He's on. He's so sexy. I mean, even, like, you know, you listen to some of his songs, and there's moments where, like, you hear the way he breathes, or, like, yeah. oh, it's so hot. I always, I put a clip up recently of, of him singing. It was, like, Pearl Jam um, acoustic or whatever, unplugged. And his eyes, uh, uh, his uh, eyes roll back. I was like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I start to think, like, is that what he looks like when he... He is <laughs> Get here, Kevin Bacon mm. Farm. Oh. Bring it on anyway. The I, I watched it. Get, uh, all here. I have we're to say, all I know is that I it came up on my Twitter again this week with the Kevin Bacon, and it just makes me so jo- full of joy and happy. And to see him singing, and he's in a barn with all these people and the fucking goats, and his wife sitting on a so bale of hay. So and I'm like, this motherfucker is living the life. Yeah. And all, yeah, and I love to see a couple that seems to really like, like enjoy each, each other and love so each other. That's cute. that's very. Good. That's and she awesome. just has like such a beautiful smile. Yeah. And no, I get vibes. I I oh, feel like so she reminds me of you. There's a vibe there that of like you. No, for real, for real. She's just so. And, and then that movie when she's like cleaning the toilet with the t-shirt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that blue t-shirt. That movie's so cute. I've been trying movie. to tell my son like you have to watch it. Like yeah. he's like loves like the whole grunge and nineties. I'm like oh, you need yeah. to watch this oh, movie. That soundtrack 100%. is so good. One hundred percent. The other thing I wanted to mention is the I, I said last week I was going to mention the Aiden uh, role on and just oh. like that the Sex and the City spinoff. Okay, first of all, I we all I mean I've said this before and I've told you but you know I was obsessed with Aiden on Everybody Sex and the City Aiden. like that was her person. Yeah, he's so tall and she's so little and well, it's and just he's like rugged. He's rugged and he's funny and he's sweet and like goofy and it's just How such a she sweet she thing. She treated him like dirt. I mean, all right, well. She's so like he dirt. comes back. Are you going to watch this? I can just tell no, you. No, tell me. All right, this is spoilers this. if you're going to watch it, whatever. He comes back. They immediately hit it off, of course. And it's like, we're going to start moving at a speed of like 100 miles an hour, right? Because they're, it's not like they don't know each other. They have always loved each other. They still love each other. And like now they're back together. And he lives in Virginia and she lives in New York, so he's, like, commuting every other weekend to come up to see her, or she goes there. He's got these three boys, and the youngest one has, like, all kinds of issues. Like, okay. his dad, his parents are, there. he's, I think he's, like, at the tail end of a divorce, but the youngest one's not taking a while. He's, like, 14 or 15. Okay. Wow. How yeah. old are all the other kids? Yeah, like, they're older. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been so, that long since this show's been on? Yeah. So, um, anyway... So at one point she is going to sell, she is, she's back in her apartment and she's going to sell her apartment and buy this, the most beautiful fucking townhouse I've ever seen. Like this old brownstone is fucking gorgeous. Cause you know, know she she's loaded money. now. Yeah. Well, you know, oh, she's, big. From big, she's got big, big money. Yeah. Okay. Well that's different. And so she's going to buy it and she's like, this is our place. And I'm like, this is fucking nuts. Like how fast this is moving. Like you could just tell it's about to all go oh, away. Yeah. So, because he, by the way, he, she also bought the place because he never wanted to step foot in that apartment again. He oh. didn't want to go to the apartment ever well, again. He didn't so she's like, well, I guess work. I got to move. Remember all but, that work? Yeah, but like, like, it's just, you know, before we saw Carrie struggling in the series, now yeah. they're all wealthy and there's no more of those problems. And it's just like throwing money around. Yeah. It's, it's, it's weird. It's weird. Ew. Yeah, 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 yeah. So she buys this beautiful place. Next thing you know. He comes, he's supposed to be at this dinner, this last dinner at her Hi. house, and uh, he doesn't come, and, and then he shows up later and finds out, she finds out that this kid had uh, taken, out, drank, and like took drugs, and like crashed his truck, because he was trying to go back to his dad's house, he wanted to be at his dad's house. So he tells her, like, I have to stay in Virginia, like, I can't come back of to New course. York, and she was like, oh, you should do what's best for your son, whatever, right? 
And then he's like, and she's like, but you know, we can still see each other. He's like, no, I really need to focus on my son and like blah, blah, blah. She's like, so what do you like, this is over. And he's like, it needs to be, he's, and she's like, well, for like how long? He says like five years. And she's like, okay, uh, what the fuck? Five years? I uh, First of all, That's I don't a understand. Weird That's well, a weird... because the kid will be out of high school. Maybe oh. he'll be old enough, right? Like, it's just such an, a weird way to get rid of Aiden on the show. It really was upsetting because I would, I was literally crying yeah. about how happy they were. Like, my daughter and I are watching it. I'm like, you don't understand. But, you know, like... They were so comfortable together, so happy yeah. together. Like, just watching them together again, it made me so fucking happy. And then, it's over. So, like, what the fuck are you doing? Stop dragging these beloved characters back into the show yeah. and then shipping them off again. I can't well, fucking stand it. And I also gotta say, like, I haven't watched the show, but from what I know of Aiden... Why is she buying some fancy schmancy townhouse? That's not his vibe anyway. Well, you know I, what I mean. Yeah, no, I know. And why well, can't he she ever go to Virginia? That was the most ridiculous part of the of the show of him being there is that they were going doing Airbnbs, they were doing hotels. So like they'd move into this place for the whole weekend because he refused to go to the apartment. Like red flag, bitch. <sighs> and he's in the middle. Of, he's got three kids. I mean, that younger kid. It was like, really upsetting. I mean, I get it. If it's recent divorce and I get it, like, he shouldn't be moving in with someone for the sake of his kid. At Listen, least. all of that. It was all way too fast. Yeah, that's a They went on weird. a first date next, you know, next weekend and she's meeting his kids. I was like, what? Yeah, that's but weird. But it was just, why? I, I don't know. It's, again, the reason why I don't know why I'm watching this show. The characters are off base. They're not like they were on the original show. There's no depth to them. And now I'm invested more. It's like the show wants me to invest more in their friends than the actual main characters of the show. I don't care about these other people. Che is one of the worst characters ever on a TV show. Why yeah, are we now are, why are we involved in her new or their new relationship? Like who gives a fuck about Che? I don't care. I do not give a fuck. I, I don't know. It just pissed me off because that like, can we just protect these romantic relationships of characters that we love? Like, can we just leave them alone? Just leave them alone. I get that. I get that. I get it. God damn it. I know. But now I can't unsee it. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm so glad. The only thing I, I saw recently was a clip with, um, she runs into, I remember the girl that I think, I think he buried her big, the, the young girl. Oh, Natasha yeah, 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 yeah. That was from the first season. And he, she runs into her or something. Yeah. And they get in a fight? Yeah, they got into a fight. It's stupid. Because like, Big left her money in the will. So? She should have get some money. Well, I mean, her Carrie thought maybe there was something going on. Oh, stupid. God. So stupid. Hey, she's so dumb. I mean, who's writing this fucking garbage? I don't know. God damn it. All right. Outfits are cute, though. Well, that they're always been cute. Yeah. All right, are we ready? Yes. Yeah, so okay. today, I saw this somewhere. I don't know what I was watching, but somebody mentioned this on a show, and I was like, what? So, it's fucking excellent. I'm so stoked to do it. Today, we're going to talk about the Zoot Suit Riots. Woo! <laughs> zoot Suit Riots. Yeah, I was just going to say. Na, 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 na. Zoot Suit Riot. Riot. <laughs> do you remember that whole, like, Yes! Oh, girl, face. please. Yes, yes. I was Cherry talking, Pop and Daddy. I was just... Who was the other one? Squirrel Nuts. Squirrel Nuts. I was talking to... <laughs> I was just talking to my yes. husband about this uh, mm. the other day. I was like, do you remember that? Because I saw something that was like, do you remember this? In the 90s, we all went through this swing phase. And I was like, oh, my God. Yes, we did. <laughs> yeah. So I, right. I might have gone to a swing class in the 90s oh. with my boyfriend. Oh, that's cute. Uh, so cute. Um, anyway, I love this whole subculture. Anytime there's a subculture that I'm not involved in, I want to know well, what's going on. And also, like, looks good. Uh, hello. The men look good. Oh, the women look God. good. It's all happening here. And they have their own little thing. I, I, the classic car shows, if you go to a really good, like, motorcycle or classic car show, there's one in West Palm Beach. The pinup girls jumped oh, out, honey. Like, yes. they are walking up and down yep. that street, and their boyfriends have those high pants with the white beater yep. shirts on. Their hair's greased back. They're all covered in tattoos. Oh, my God. It is, Live for is it. Is that, like, rockabilly? Yes, yes, yeah. with the fucking stand-up bass. Oh, my God. I, 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 I fucking love it. I love it. Anyway. Woo. So, the Zoot Suit Riots was 
like a real thing. <laughs> like it wasn't just a song. Yeah. Uh, so the Zoom Zoom riots were a series of riots that took place from June 3rd to through June 8th, 1943 in Los Angeles, California, including American servicemen stationed in Southern California and young Latino and Mexican American city residents. So during the Great Depression in the early 1930s, the United States deported between 500,000 and 2 million people of Mexican descent, wow. including the legal expulsion of up to 1.2 million U.S. citizens. Remember, we talked about this on the podcast we before. We did, we did. In order to reduce demands on limited Amer uh, economic resources. By the late 1930s, about 3 million Mexican Americans resided in uh, the United States. Los Angeles had the highest concentration of Mexicans outside of Mexico. Job discrimination in Los Angeles forced minorities to work for below poverty level wages. The Los Angeles newspapers described Mexicans with racially inflammatory propaganda, even suggesting a problem with juvenile delinquency. These factors caused much racial tension between Mexican immigrants, those of Mexican descent, and white people. During this time, Los Angeles was undergoing an expansion, which caused disruptions in communal sites, family sites, and family patterns of social interactions due to poor city planning. One major decision was to put a multi-million dollar naval training school for the Naval Reserve Armory in the Ch Chavez Ravine, a primarily working class and immigrant area for Mexican Americans. Lalo Guerrero became known as the father of Chicano music as young people adopted music, language, and dress <clears throat> of their own. So Chicano or Chicana um, is how someone who's a Mexican descent living in the United States, that's how they identify themselves. Um, so young men wore zoot suits, which was this flamboyant long jacket with baggy pegged pants. You know, they're pegged yes. around the ankle. Sometimes accessorized with a pork pie hat, a long Ooh. watch chain. They, they, like the watch chain would go down to their knee and come back up to their hip, you know? Uh, and thick-soled shoes. They call themselves pachu pachucos. pachucos. Nice. Yeah, so zoot suit fashion found its origins in the urban black scene during the 1940s. This style of clothing cultivated a sense of racial pride and significance. However, the fashion statement soon made its way into the wardrobes of young Ca Ca Southern Californian Mexican Americans, Italians, and Filipinos who became the quintessential wearers of the zoot suit. Ooh, the zoot they look hot. <clears throat> oh, so hot. So many so pictures hot. of hot men Ooh. in zoot suits. Can we put some on our Insta? Yes, <laughs> we will. The zoot suit provided young African-American and Mexican youth a sense of indiv individualistic identity within their cultures and society as they discovered, quote, highly charged emotional and symbolic meaning through the movement, music, and dress. The female parallels uh, were called pachucas and wore tight sweaters and relatively Ooh. full and flared skirts, Not often shit. paired with high hairdos and large earrings and heavy makeup, right? So they would wear those, that fucking eyeliner, yes. the bright red lips, their hair would be in like a, you know, it's the 1940s, yes. but it's still like a very different look than what's like, yes. what was proper or whatever. Um, and I just found it really interesting because the, the a, lot of, a lot of the articles that I read was like, you know, they would wear these suits as like, um, even though they were poor or whatever, they were bright colored. It felt like it, it, they were somebody, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it, it was for them and I they like were that. into that like music that. from their country. And it was just, I don't know. I just, so fucking cool looking. In the early 1940s, arrests of Mexican American youths and negative stories in the Los Angeles times fueled a perception that these Pachuco gangs were delinquents who were a threat to the broader community. In the summer of 1942, the Sleepy Lagoon murder case made national news. Uh, nine, it was a man who was killed. So uh, nine teenage members of the 38th Street gang were accused of murdering a civilian man named Jose Diaz in an abandoned quarry pit. The nine defendants were convicted at trial and sentenced to long prison terms. Eduardo Obergeon Pagan wrote, quote, Many Angelinos saw the death of Jose Diaz as a tragedy that resulted from a larger pattern of lawlessness and rebellion among Mexican-American youths discerned through their self-conscious fashioning of difference and increasingly called for stronger measures to crack down on juvenile delinquency, end quote. Mm. The convictions of the nine young men were ultimately overturned. So they were falsely accused. Yes. But the case generated much animosity within the United States towards Mexican Americans. The police and press characterized all Mexican youths as, quote, pachuco, hoodlums, and baby gangsters. Wow. Lovely. Within the, uh, which reminds me, uh, that whole thing case reminded me of the Central Park Five. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. With Trump. Remember that? Yeah. Uh, hmm. 
Okay, so World War II. With the entry of the United States into World War II um, on December, in December 1941, following the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, the nation had to deal with the restrictions of rationing and the prospects of a draft. In March 1942, the War Production Board, or WPB, regulated the manufacture of men's suits and all clothing that contained wool. To achieve a 26% cutback in the use of fabrics, the WPB issued regulations for the manufacture of what Esquire magazine called, quote, streamlined suits by Uncle Sam, end quote. The regulations effectively forbade the manufacture of the wide-cut zoot suits and full women's skirts or are dresses. Are you kidding me? Because it's a lot of material. When you look at these suits, I mean, the jackets are long, but the pants yeah. are, like, billowing. It's so much fucking material. I know. All right. But we're at war, okay. so we got to cut back. We got a rash. We got a rash. Everybody calm down okay. uh, <laughs> with your fucking suits. Most legitimate, but also men wore suits. Like that yeah. was, they, nobody's wearing jeans and t-shirts no, running around. I don't like, even wish like some of that would Yes! Be How hot. It would be hot. Like classy. Yeah. This should be like a national dress classy day. Ooh. That'd be hot. And the hats. The oh yeah. The hats. Oh my God. Oh, so cute. So cute. Oh my God. Um... Most legitimate tailoring companies ceased to manufacture or advertise any suits that fell outside the War Production Board's guidelines. But the demand for zoot suits did not decline. A network of bootleg tailors based in Los Angeles and New York City continued to produce the garments. Ooh, uh, <laughs> I love that. We can find some fabric somewhere. Yeah. Make it's like happen. it's like prohibition where you find yeah. a way to get alcohol. There's people yeah. making zoot suits in the basement somewhere. That's so cool. Yeah. Youths also continued to wear clothes which they already owned, right? Okay. Like, what were they gonna Calm do? down, like, everybody. Like go into people, everyone's yeah. closet and say you can't have these suits right. anymore. That's stupid. It's ridiculous. Meanwhile, American soldiers, sailors, and Marines from across the country traveled to Los Angeles in large, large numbers as part of the, of the war effort. They were given leave while waiting to be shipped out to the Pacific. So you've got like, you know, yo-yos from Alabama and Kentucky coming yeah. out to Los Angeles uh -oh. and re at that where that ravine base was, oh. where there's you know, and now we've got an issue, right? Because Hello. Just go to, to war. Like, mm. can you just enjoy this time before you have to be shipped off yeah. somewhere? You know what I mean? Why are you why so are, angry? Why are we? Well, we're white people. Yeah. Servicemen and zoot suitors in Los Angeles were both immediately identifiable by their dress. Some servicemen and others in the community felt that the continued wearing of zoot suit represented the youth's public flouting of rationing regulations. Can you imagine? This is like moms of liberty of their time. Yeah. Like, you can't wear a suit. This because you're flouting regulations? It's somebody that's already, already in their closet. It. You already own it. Fucking idiots. What is wrong with our country? People need to back the fuck up. Back up! Like, what are you doing? Don't you have anything How else to do? People alone. I what? don't get it. I mean, I cannot. I cannot. Everybody's always so concerned yeah. with somebody else. Like, go look in your own life yeah. for five minutes. Leave me alone and my yeah. zoot suit Leave and my boyfriend alone. and his zoot suit. Yeah. All right? He looks so he, cute with the zoot suit. I, I mean, uh, that's all he wants to do is wear it. Yeah, and I like care. saying zoot suit. Zoot suit is zoot suit. <laughs> Officials began to cast wearing of zoot suits in moral terms and associated with the commission of petty crime, violence, and the snubbing of national wartime You crime. have to be kidding Wartime me. rules. Yeah. In 1943, many servicemen resented the sight of young Latinos wearing zoot suits after clothing restrictions had been published, especially as most came from areas of the country with little experience or knowledge of Mexican-American culture. So here we go again. Let's, we don't understand. Let's, we don't so understand. So let's you. hate it. Yeah. Instead well, there, of let's try to understand. Yeah. Or let's you know. Um, I, I don't get this. I, I I don't understand our just inclination to fear and hatred. Like that is our first go to. Yeah. Well, it's our we're, first we're, go to. We're dumb animals. Like we're just dumb dumb animals. Easy easily manipulated. In the weeks before the riots, servicemen reported that Pachucos had been harassing, molesting, raping, and insulting their wives, <gasps> girlfriends, and relatives. Go. Right? It's always this. Yeah. One local Los Angeles newspaper included a story of two young women who had allegedly been abducted in downtown and raped in a zoot suit orgy. Quote, unquote. Many of these reports began building up and was and was one of the major instigators of the coming riots, as servicemen and had declared that they will take matters into their own hands since the Los Angeles Police Department had supposedly done nothing to stop the attacks from Pachucos on their women. Don't you have some basic training you should be doing to yeah. prepare for the war you're about to go to? Right? You said they're there being shipped off to war. Yeah. Isn't there stuff like that you should be doing? Yeah. 
In Los Angeles? My God. Oh, LA, man. So many things to do. So LA. weird. I love Tina always abbreviates everything. Me too. LA. What However, does that mean? Yeah. What is this? <laughs> However, the press was dominated by the stories which often claim that, quote, loose girls of the Los Angeles Mexican Quarter, end quote, <gasps> were responsible for taking advantage of unaware sailors who had money. Oh. So they're so, all okay, so, sluts. So, so the women are, are whores. Yeah. And the men are rapists. Juvenile delinquents, yeah. The men are rapists and the women are whores. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Sounds That's familiar. Right. There's a person who said yeah. that Mexico's sending us all of their worst people. Yeah. Uh, this is fucking 60, uh, wait, this was 80 years ago. The, the fucking never race, change. the racist grift never ends. <laughs> never fucking ends the racism. On the night of June 3rd, 1943, about 11 sailors got off a bus and started walking along Main Street in downtown Los Angeles, encountering a group of young men, uh, young uh, Mexican-Americans in zoot suits. They got into an argument. The sailors later told the LAPD that they were jumped and beaten by this gang, while the zoot suitors claimed the altercation was started by the sailors. The LAPD responded to the incident, including many off-duty officers oh, who okay. identified themselves as the Vengeance Squad. Oh, ha! Huh. Remember Los Angeles is always with their squad. I mean, Remember they all have those yes. squads. I covered one of them. Um, the oh, officers went. Squad. Yeah, the officers went to the scene, quote, seeking to clean up Main Street from what they viewed as the loathsome influence of Pachuco gangs. End quote. The next day, 200 sailors got a convoy of about 20 taxi cabs and headed for East Los Angeles, no. the corner of the Mexican American settlement or the center of the Mexican American settlement. What? The sailors spotted a group of young zoot suitors and assaulted them <gasps> with clubs. They stripped the boys of the zoot suits and burned the tattered clothes no. in a pile. Yeah. They oh attacked and stripped God. everyone they came across who was wearing zoot suits. Ripped them right off their bodies. Media oh coverage God. of the incidents then started to spread, inducing more people to join in the mayhem. <gasps> As in like, hey, this is what's happening down here. Come. And like, let's go help instead of let's go help the people being beat up. Let's beat the fuck out of people. Wow. During the next few that days... That mob mentality, man. It's yeah. something else. During the next few days, thousands of servicemen and residents joined the attacks, marching abreast down streets, entering bars and movie houses, and assaulting any young Mexican-American males they encountered. In one incident, sailors dragged two zoot suitors on stage as a film was being screened, stripped them in front of the audience, and then urinated on the suits. Although police accompanied the rioters, they had orders not to arrest any. And some of them joined in the rioting. After several days, more than 150 people had been injured and the police had arrested more than 500 Mexican-American civilians on charges ranging from rioting to vacancy. Nice. So basically, just do whatever you want, yeah. white people, and we're just going to arrest all the brown people. A witness to the attacks, journalist Carrie McWilliams wrote, quote, Marching through the streets of downtown Los Angeles, a mob of several thousand soldiers and civilians proceeded to beat up every zoot suitor they could find. Pushing its, pushing its way into the important motion picture theaters, the mob ordered the management to turn on the house lights and then ran up and down the aisles, dragging Mexicans <gasps> out, of their, out of their seats. Street cars were halted while Mexicans and some Filipinos and Negroes were jerked from their seats, pushed into the streets, and beaten into a sadi with a sadistic frenzy, end quote. The local press lauded the attacks, describing them as having, quote, a cleansing effect. To rid Los Angeles of miscreants and oh hoodlums. My God. Is this crazy? This is wild. Fucking nuts. Yeah, so they didn't no, just stop at Mexicans. Wild. Anybody that was not, not white um, not white was being yeah. beaten. Uh, the Los, Los Angeles City Council approved a resolution criminalizing the wearing of zoot suits with pleats wow, within the go. city limits of Los Angeles. Way to go. With the expectation that Mayor Fletcher Bowen would sign it into law. Councilman, so instead of like, maybe we should pass a law that you can't be out after 10 o'clock, right? Like, let's do or, a curfew. Or... You know, you can't assault people and pull them from streetcars and theaters and restaurants and wherever they are walking yeah. and living freely no. in your city. How about that? Councilman Norris Nelson stated, quote, the zoot suit has become a badge of hoodlumism, end quote. No ordinance was approved by the city council or signed into law by the mayor, but the council encouraged the WPB to take steps to, quote, Curb illegal production of men's clothing in violation of WPB limitation orders, end quote. So they're going to push, kick the can over to yeah. the war production board right. of you need to take care of this and crack down on people making zoot suits instead of the criminals beating the fuck out of people and ripping you clothes off to be of wearing them. Zoot, like, what if you had a closet full of zoot suits, man? <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, this doesn't make any sense. While the mobs first had first targeted only Pachucos, they also attacked African Americans and Zoot Suits who lived in the Central A Avenue Corridor area. The Navy and Marine Corps command staff intervened on June 8th, five days later, to reduce the attacks, confining sailors and Marines to barracks and ordering that Los Angeles be declared off limits to all military personnel. Their official position was that their men were acting in self defense. Oh. <laughs> How about get your men in order and keep them busy with their training before they yeah. go to war? This is, How this, does, I mean, their superiors, everyone's going to know that they've been gone for hours. And isn't that like, you know, uh, what is it, the unbecoming of a soldier, like whatever? Don't they have that kind of rule? Oh, Tina, please. But they're supposed to, right? Of course. But give me oh, that's why they said the self-defense thing, because they want to get rid of that. So the aftermath, this is, this gets so fucking twisted and wild, girl. It's crazy. So af as the riots subsided, the most urgent concern of officials was relations with Mexico. As the economy of Southern California relied on the importation of cheap Mexican labor to assist um, in the harvesting of California crops. I hate well, it. We don't want to upset. After the Mexican embassy lodged a formal protest with the State Department, Governor Earl Warren of California ordered the creation of the McGuckin Committee, headed by Los Angeles Bishop, um... Joseph McGuckin to investigate and determine the cause of the riots. This is when we would, you know, get the church involved <laughs> in charge of a committee for the state. <laughs> I, I, I don't even understand. Although that. Archdiocese, uh, the bishop here, the Arch of Miami Archdiocese, uh, uh, Wenski, I, I don't know if you've read his op eds, but he's written several about the Florida immigration laws that are fucking incredible. Oh, like good. they fought against it and they're still trying to fight against right. it. Like they oh. are like, you yeah, know, but can you because a lot of their version too. Yeah, well, that's I guess happened. we can. Have that <laughs> in 1943, the committee. Okay, so this committee convenes right with this arch, the the bishop. Uh, 1943, the committee issued a uh, its report. It determined racism to be a central cause of the riots. Further stating, Surprise! <laughs> further stating that it was quote an aggravated practice of the media to link the the phrase zoot suit with the report of a crime. End quote. Great, right? Yeah. The governor appointed the Peace Officers Committee on Civil Disturbances, chaired by Robert W. Kenney, president of the National Lawyers Guild, to make recommendations to the police. Human relations committees were appointed in police departments. It's all like red tape stuff, right? Um, human relations committees uh, were, were appointed and police departments were required to train their officers to treat all citizens equally. <gasps> Yay! I mean, what a concept. Racism's <laughs> over. Mayor Fletcher Bowen. How many months of time is this? Yeah, no, it's, years. People, it's probably years. Yeah, but... and meanwhile, people are just getting, you know, abused and beat up. Yeah. And... Mayor Fletcher Bowron. Oh, my, you know, well, meanwhile, Los Angeles is where, uh, what's his name? <laughs> what am I thinking of? Who got beat in the streets? Rodney King. Rodney King. Yeah. <laughs> in the 90s, so 50 years later. Wait, was it? Not much uh, has changed in Los Angeles. April 26, 1992. There was a riot in the streets. Tell me, where were you? My God! Riots in the street in Miami. No, no I Sublime. No, no, no. Yeah. I can't get into Sublime like right, this. Well, I know I like, to, that song came out lines. because of all the riots from Monica. I had to do it. I had to do it. Well, had to is kind of. I, <laughs> I, I know. wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> the <laughs> lyrics, everything's just floating around that I head. Know, sorry. <laughs> I had a leak. Okay. Yeah, no. I need listen, to sing. honey. You sing all you want. I love it. Oh. Uh, Mayor <laughs> Mayor Fletcher Bowron downplayed the role racial prejudice played in the riots and blamed Mexican youth gangs. <laughs> after, the report, after all these reports, he's like, so ah! I love how much money <laughs> can someone go back in time and yeah. just go through and tell us how much money was spent on all of this for some guy to go, yeah. and no, that's not right. Yeah, here I am doing this story eight years guy, later, and it's like, one guy. It decides, yeah. yeah, screw it. Like, no, 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 no. It's like basically the Republican Party. You can yeah, show no, all the evidence of Brian and go, no, no, no. Nothing ever not changes. It all stays the same. On uh, June 16th, 1943, after the riots, First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt commented on the riots in her newspaper column. She said, quote, the question goes deeper than just suits. It is a racial protest. I have been worried for a long time about the Mexican racial situation. It is a problem with roots going uh, going a long way back, and we do not always face these problems as we should, end quote. The Los Angeles Times then published an editorial the next day expressing outrage. It accused Mrs. Roosevelt of having communist leanings and stirring race discord, oh, end quote. She I is. Love, she's the one doing yeah, that. Yeah, uh, this is my favorite thing in the world. She's it's a commie. It's the same thing. <laughs> She's a commie. That's the first that's lady. Title. Yeah. She, the first lady's a commie. Um, she, uh, she's a commie. So, I don't 
<laughs> like we see this today, right? Like with 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 the anti woke bill, right? Like this whole idea of um, um, we're not going to teach history because the teaching of real history somehow yeah. makes you woke <laughs> and makes people feel bad, and so you're the problem yeah. instead of just going, yeah, man, that that sucked. Yeah, and uh, we need to do better as a society, and like let's learn from these things from the past. No. We're just, we, it's always about shifting blame. Yeah. No one wants to accept responsibility for the shitty person that they are. Yeah. It's terrible. It's easier this way. And, and, and listen, humans are always going to take the easy route. That's like what we're going to do. We're going to do the, uh. instead of doing the hard work, we're, majority of people will just take the easy route, which is like voting for a loud mouth or something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's just easier to be like, fuck it. Fuck the system. That's more fun than like. The system's broken. How can we fix it? Right. <laughs> it's just like, let's keep fucking it, you know? Um, on June 21st, 1943, the State Un-American Activities Committee under the state Senator Jack Tenney arrived in Los Angeles with orders to, quote, determine whether the present Zoot Suit riots were sponsored by Nazi agencies attempting to spread disunity between the United States and Latin American countries, end quote. So now it's Nazis that did it. Th this is how far we're going to push that we are, we can't yeah. white supremacy cannot be a part of right. this. We we can't be to it blame. can't be white yeah. racist servicemen and police officers right. it's or something else. newspaper art writers, right? No, it's not that. It's Nazis, it's the communist first lady. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? How far are we gonna go with this? Although Tenney claimed he had evidence the riots were, quote, Axis sponsored, end quote, no evidence was ever presented to support this claim. Japanese propaganda broadcasts accused the U.S. government of ignoring the brutality of the U.S. and Marines towards Americans. Look at the Japanese propaganda coming through. <laughs> in, the, in late 1944, ignoring the findings of the McGuckin Committee, on October 4th, the Tenney Committee announced that the National Lawyers Guild was, quote, an effective communist front, end quote. Can you believe this? It doesn't make any sense. Later, scholars generally characterize the Zoot Suit riots as a, quote, pogrom against the American, um, Mexican-American community, end quote. Many post-Civil War rights activists and authors such as Luis Valdez, Ralph, Ralph Ellison, and Richard Wright have said they were inspired by the Zoot Suit riots. In June of 2023, <laughs> but about 80 years after the attacks, Los Angeles County publicly apologized for the Zoot Suit riots. Wow. I mean... Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's uh, this, like we said earlier, you know, if you look up Zoot Suit right now, you'll find uh, 20 different tailors in Los Angeles that make Zoot Suits. And I mean, like, incredible. And they do have these, the, the outfits that Pachucas would wear, but now these Pachucas are wearing Zoot Suits themselves. It is so fucking hot. Women in these suits Ooh. is so fucking hot because the pants are like high-waisted. And and they then they had that like hairdo that nineteen forties hairdo with their fucking eyeliner. Oh, I can't wait to see. My God, uh, I can't wait to see. They look they, so. There, there's one picture where there's like a line of them like outside their you know store where they make these suits, and everyone's wearing a zoot suit. The men and women, they look so fucking cool. Ooh, I love like and it's also a look that's approachable. I feel like you know it's kind of like. They're oh, yeah. cool, but you could totally go talk to them. Like, yes. you're not intimidated oh, by the zoot no, suit. No, 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 You know no. what I mean? No. And also, like, when I think zoot suit, there is a part of me that thinks of the mask. Remember when Jim Carrey was wearing that yellow zoot suit? Oh. That I, dumb mask on? I remember. I mean, I didn't know. That was one, like, Jim Carrey movie. Like, maybe I saw yeah, one. Honey, you didn't miss anything. But yeah. he wears this yellow zoot suit. I remember. Suit. I have a, I have a, a But it was also, like, the time yes. of zoot suit riot yeah, yeah, and all yeah, yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, like, yeah. whoever did that movie yeah totally drew like took that inspiration yeah. for like what was happening in the 90s i remember that whole vibe yeah and the, the videos oh yeah it was a good vibe the dancing yeah all right yeah <laughs> yeah somehow in like the 90s teenage rom-com everybody knew how to swing dance yeah because at the dance at the end of the movie there's oh there's without a doubt squirrel nut zippers or somebody on the stage, and everybody in the crowd is flipping and turning yeah. and knowing how to swing dance. Like, I yeah. don't know how that happened at that high school, but... No. <laughs> Did I ever tell you what... Uh, I went to Fort Lauderdale High School, go Flying Owls. Hi. Um, and for our senior year, when we had, like, the prom meeting for senior year, it was, like, a whole bunch of seniors. Yeah. We had to vote on the song that we wanted to be our song at the prom. And our uh, class unanimously voted on everybody was kung fu fighting well 
which was hilarious because I also voted for it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, everybody was Kung Fu fighting. Da -da 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 -da. You know that song? Yeah. And these motherfucking bitches on the prom committee, these they fucking, voted it down. You know, you know what oh, girls I'm talking me. about. Don't tell me. The what plastics. They, oh yeah. Don't tell me what they did. I don't Please even. Don't I gotta tell you. Stupid, like, they, they they did not take the vote though. They picked their own fucking song, yes, which I don't even I remember what it was. Okay. But it wasn't. Everybody was Kung Fu fighting. And it's very disappointing. Okay, that's all I'm saying. Everybody was coming. It's those those women are now moms for liberty. Oh, probably. they were for, they were cutting they were said you don't know what's best. We're gonna pick the song. Now they don't now they don't want your they don't know they you don't know what's best for your kids to read. We're gonna choose it for you. That's the th it's the same women that are doing that. Oh, they do not respect God. the vote. <laughs> they did not. Wow, I can't believe all, all of that just ran through my head. Yeah, those are the same women. They're the, like the most beautiful women you've ever seen in like high school, right? The girls that were just like, Let's see what they how in like high now, school is someone this good looking, you know? All right. Well, thank you. So good to see you. Um, hi, sorry, my I'm, I'm getting texts about like I'm supposed to be at a soccer game soon and I'm like, I thought I had time. Mm. God, life. I guess we're leaving then. I we guess should we're go. leaving. <laughs> Time to go back to the reality. See you next week. Bye. Bye.